Hi, I've got some bad news for you. Look at this. You know how they say that uh, batteries only leak in your like expensive precious gear? Well, this is the EEV Log Triple Five Multimeter. Only two of these are in existence. And um, I just got it out of a uh, box it was in and it felt like it had batteries in it based on the weight. Yes, it does actually have a uh, holster here. I went, well, when was the last time I've used that? And I thought, oh, I should get those batteries out of there. And well, the first problem I had is that I actually tried to um, take the back cover off. It's only got two screws and then it's supposed to lift off. It didn't lift off. So, you know what that means? Prepare yourself for this rare, <laughs> only two of a kind, multimeter. I have checked my other one. My other one is perfect without the batteries in it. Yeah, I was able to get this open, but... Wah, 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 wah. Press F in the chat. What do you want to be? I want to be a wallaby. Not um, wallaby. Premium alkaline batteries, ultra life. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, this is how it's stuck to the, like, the back cover and why I couldn't get it off. Wow, that is horrific. I have not seen something that bad in a long time. Oh, that is just terrible, Muriel. Unbelievable. I'm kind of sad that I'm not shooting this in 4K. I might actually, before I treat this, I might go shoot it on the 4K camera. Um, I am I am, am looking for a Tagano camera microscope for 4K. Tagano didn't want to upgrade mine to a 4K, so... And I'm not sure what angle it was stored at, because a lot of the damage in these sorts of meters can be based on what angle you store them at. Potassium hydroxide has yeah, come a guts us, so we've got a plastic container lid here, so... Because this is going to get pretty messy. Okay, I think. I don't think that one leaked. I think that's just coming from this shocker here. Oh no, it must have, because this is the positive end. You see it, you can see the seal is on the bottom negative. Or it should be on the negative side. Yeah. Is that a is that a red rubber seal? That's interesting. That's where they usually leak from. Likewise, this positive one down here has probably just collected all the crap from the negative. The one next to it, maybe it's possible, but usually that's just one formed. Is it? Or is that just the light playing tricks on me? Yeah, I think that's just one formed. Usually that's just one formed contact. And the pressure seal is usually on the negative side of the cell. Oh, ugh. look at that. Oh, man, that is awful. Should be wearing gloves here, really, but, uh, yeah, she'll be right. <laughs> um, wow, look at that. Wow, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Lovely crystal formation. Beautiful. We might actually get lucky here, in that if we can neutralize this sucker, whew, wow, yeah, if we can neut neutralize it, then maybe... Maybe we can get lucky and stop and stop the corrosion. Okay, so what we're going to do is get the uh, the white vinegar that will hopefully neutralise it. Need this in like an atomizer uh, spray or something. Just drip it. Actually, wow! Look at that! Look at that! The white vinegar. Go the white vinegar. Wow! that. That's really something, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. I think we're going to have to be brutal on this. Don't do this at home, kids. All right. But yeah, that is really bad. So we have to try and try and neutralize that and get my 100% isopropyl in there. So how much of that is going down onto the PCB contacts inside? I don't know. I probably should have taken it apart first, maybe before I before I did that. But anyway, let's take it apart now. And there's the bottom of it. Have a look down there, yeah. That's a battery terminal. Yeah, we've got some corrosion down there, all right. And is that crept under the solder mask there? Whoa. Oh, what's the blue? Look at the blue there. 
Have we gotten here just in time? What is the blue? We might have gotten here just in time. So, wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely clean up all that. All right. Oh, yeah, look at that. Just neutralizing that with some vinegar. Yeah, I don't know what that blue is. It's interesting. It's just contained in this area, so pretty happy with that. I expected a lot worse. Isopropyl. Yeah, they got lots of shielding on this sucker. Going right up both sides here. I think, I think we're going to be in luck saving this. I'd be surprised if that's damaged in any way. As I said, it looked like maybe a bit of corrosion on that contact. It looks like maybe has something gotten under the traces there, under the solder mask there on the copper. And maybe that pin there on U13 there, one of the pins looks a bit tarnished. Generally, not too bad, pretty happy with that. Yeah, that battery contact there. Yeah, it's really got some solid, solid corrosion on that. I don't know, would you put a new solder coat on that or not? And this is going to be fun. See if we can put some vinegar. Yeah, it's, it's sort of that reddy color. It's just the lights. It's like red there. So let's see what happens if I actually get some vinegar on that. Woo! <laughs> Look at that. Oh, geez, that's fun. That's fun. Look at that. Good stuff. <laughs> wow. That vinegar's going to town there, isn't it? Hours of fun for the whole family. <laughs> Give it a scrub scrub. And that battery compartment will be good to go again. Or the battery cover. Oh, sorry. I stopped recording there for a second after cleaning up. This contact here is actually stuck down flush. This was supposed to be the other spring contact, which is like that one. And this was completely stuck down. It was flat. And then I just lifted it up and it just popped out of there. <laughs> oh, wow. This is incredible. There we go. Look at that. There goes the vinegar. Yeah, it's just kind of coming out the bottom there. I don't like the look of that contact, though. It does look pretty corroded. So, like, compared to, like, the, like, shiny... On that one, this one does look corroded. Not that confident that that will last. Wow, what's going on there? Look at that. I think that will eventually, no matter how much we've stopped it, it's still just going to, still just going to corrode. That's not good long term. Got some more bubbly action happening on the bottom there. That vinegar really does. It. Whoa, there we go. Yeah, you got to put a lot on. Just keep putting it on until it stops bubbling away. Yeah, this is really odd how that's stuck. I'm not sure how that spring's actually held in there. I can't seem to dig that crystal out of there. Anyway, it's it's still intact. Of course, I've seen... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. I've seen many products where the terminal's already corroded and, and it just falls off. Yeah, maybe I can just pull that contact. I'll, I'll try it on the other one. Up this end. Can I just pull that? Oh, oh, yeah, got it, got it. There you go. So I should be able to do the same thing for this dodgy contact down here. Oh, yeah. Got it. Check that out. We'll just neutralize him. Completely. Salvageable. Metallurgist, leave it in the comments. What do you think we're going to be able to do with that sucker? Who thinks that's going to be a winner winner chicken dinner long term? I wouldn't count on it. Yeah. I think the best thing to do with those is to throw those in the ultrasonic bath. Because yeah, if you leave that, you know, like you can get stuff like trapped down in there and it can just keep eating away the metal and stuff. So, yeah, you can see how these ones hit. Like it's all trapped inside there. You can't just clean this surface. Like you've got to get a little. Ah. It's terrible. Um, yeah, you've got to get all these out or separately outside of the housing. Otherwise, it's not going to be good long term. There's, there's the back side of the other one. You can see it's really started to eat away on those contacts. Like, I could try and clean them with the ultrasonic bath, but 
Long term, I don't like it. Okay, so I'm just ultrasonically cleaning these now. Uh, the only thing I've got is this uh, Cleanium uh, stuff from uh, Chemtools, which is normally designed for uh, PCBs, but I don't know, should be good enough. If there's anything better, let me know in the comments down below. But uh, I've just got it inside a little baggie in there, so I didn't completely fill uh, the tank with this. Um, so I've got it inside a little ziploc -y, uh bag, and then uh, the rest of it's uh, filled with water. So there we go, put that on for a few minutes and got the contacts in the little baggie there. Well, I'll get them out and uh, see what's what. They should be pretty clean after that. So this is the end result after the ultrasonic bath. Yeah, they really started to corrode, haven't they? Not terrific. Maybe. Oh, look at that. Is that some crust still on the... Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, that plating's just completely eaten away, isn't it? What is that, like a nickel plating or whatever yeah it's completely gone the spring is like uh, like you could put it back in and your product would work <laughs> but long term no you'd want to be uh getting a new set of contacts there that's what a good one's supposed to look like still got its still got its plating completely on so that one's all right and we've got one battery contact which is perfect but Whack those side by side and you can really... That is terrible, Muriel. Yeah, nah. But I think we have protected the PCB. Now, everyone will say this. Put the entire board in the ultrasonic bath. Um, unfortunately, my ultrasonic bath is not big enough for this board. It's just a little smidge too wide. Yeah, and really, there's, the only, there's only that one spot down there that's really a problem. I can get the board out. Maybe some of it's gone under the edge and on the bottom. Some corrosion under the solder mask down there. So there we go. I got the board out. Big plastic. We have to get all the screen off here to see under there. There we go. Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> got some, got some fluid in there. So that's our LCD, and they've got interesting looking plastic holder here. Can't remember taking this apart. <laughs> Would have done it donkey's years ago, but uh, yeah, we're on this side here. So basically, no. The answer is no, there's no damage. There's no damage under there at all. So nothing got onto the bottom side. Yeah, no wackers. There you go. That's the DM Digital Multimeter Triple Five, the EV Blog Triple Five. And uh, looking at the day code there, that was uh, 31st week uh, 2020. There's the range switch for those playing along at home. Um, so yeah, if you want to know the... Uh, history of this thing. The history is that um, I basically didn't know about this at all. I did not know about this at all. Um, it is based on the design of the 121 GW, which um, uh, Kane and myself actually uh, des designed that Kane test. And because they designed it and basically financed the uh, design of it, then, um, th you know, they hold the rights to the design effectively, although I, I had exclusive deal for the 121 uh, to sell the 121 GW, of course. But yeah, just um, out of the blue, one time, I guess it was in late 2020 there, they just um, <laughs> sent me an email saying, hey, we're sending you um, some new meters to check out. And <laughs> these two meters turned up. The, I had no idea, like the, the 555, um, I don't know if, like, that's something that I would have picked, but I, I had no input into that whatsoever. It turned up and I went, the 555 multimeter? What? And, um, yeah, it's, they designed this off their own bat for their own market requirements. Oh, the little, um, <laughs> little IR window fell out. So I, you can actually, um, buy this, I believe, as the, uh, as the cane test triple five meter. I think it might only be available in, um, the Asian market or something like that. I don't think I've ever seen it in Western markets. Um, but, but you can actually technically buy it. <laughs> I, I believe. I think they're still selling it. So they did actually sell it. But I had a look at it and I go, ah, oh, well, you know, it didn't really have the feature set I was looking for. And it had stuff like the uh, motor uh, capability and stuff like that, which I had no real interest in. But uh, yeah, it was designed. They wanted a true what uh, versions, whereas the 121GW only measures VA, whereas this one has a dedicated uh, chipset, um, uh, one of those energy uh, chipsets to actually measure true wattage, so take measure the phase angle and everything else. So they decided that there was a market there for that. Um, I'm not sure how many they've sold or how successful uh, it has been, but technically this meter exists, but this is the only one with the EEV blog uh, branding on it. 
um, or the only two in existence with the EV blog branding. And so I decided not to go ahead. I was still busy with the 121 at the time, and I didn't want yet another, like a slight, like a higher end model. And it was, you know, going to be pricey and stuff. So yeah, I, I didn't go ahead with it. But um, yeah, they made it for their own market. And uh, yeah. so if anyone's got one, <laughs> Leave it in the comments down below if you've got a Kane triple five. I, I think like they had the 500 series, so I think 555. They didn't pick that because I don't think so because of the 555 timer. I think it was just in their 500 series or something like that. So yeah, I think it's a coincidence. But then it's ironically something that I would have picked <laughs> the triple five multimeter. So yeah, I need a bigger ultrasonic bar for bigger boards like this. If you've got links to one that, you know, big wide, but I don't want the hugely deep one, you know, with all the giant taps on it and everything. I just want, like, you know, like a shallow, like wide, big one for PCBs that are just shallow. Yeah, there you go. That's probably the energy chipset. An Atmel jobby, is it? Interesting. What's that? No, I don't know what that one is there. This is interesting. The backlight uses the uh, little lead strip across here like this, mounted vertically. So, you didn't have to uh, desolder that, so that's quite neat. That's the STM processor on there for those playing along at home. In this model, they're using the exact same molding as the 121 GW. So, yeah, I've got plenty of 121 GW cases, so I can just um, transplant some contacts out of there into the uh, 555 and Bob's your uncle has changed and of course it is a physically bigger case because it's got uh, it's got more better uh, features on it and it's got the window up there and everything else but yeah that battery compartment they've, they've certainly reused that so the terminal should be good to go all right so will it work pretty confident that it will of course um because the only thing wrong is that battery uh contact which uh, given enough pressure on the spring it'll it'll work for now anyway a <laughs> long term is a different matter we not 1.00 version 1.00 firmware yeah uh, lead? Oh, lead? It's got a lead problem. Oh, there you go. That's interesting. Maybe there is some contamination on the board. Well, well it shouldn't be in the contacts. So, yeah, it turns off on uh, current as and power as well, um, as you'd uh, expect it to. So, of course, we've got the uh, triple display up here. Very nice. This was the actually the original intention um, behind the 121GW was to include a true power measurement uh, chip. And I've done a video um, on that, the history of it. It was too expensive at the time. It, you know, it pushed it out of the price point um, that I wanted. It works. So the battery contact works, but that's just the lead insertion thing. Oh, there you go. It stopped. I just plugged it into the amps. It stopped. So something's going on there. That's oddball. Anyway, as I said, this is not a production unit. Anyway, I'm not going to investigate that now. Sorry, uh, my, my <laughs> priority was to get this thing to stop the rot of the alkaline battery uh, leakage there. You wouldn't reuse those. Like, you could replate them. You know, what is that, a nickel plating or whatever? You could try and, like, replate them and stuff like that. Likewise, you could try and replate the uh, PCB contact in there, but I think a better bet with that might be um, to actually use some, some adhesive copper tape, for example, and use that as a uh, pad, but then it's copper and it's not gold, so, you know, it's only going to tarnish, and or maybe you can get a little adhesive gold-plated tape. With, I don't think I have any of that, something like that, and stick it back on or something, I don't know. Leave your favourite technique in the comments uh, down below. And that little uh, strip of PCB trace that looks like it might have got on, got under the solder mask. Yeah, I could scrape that back and uh, neutralise that and try and clean it up so the rot doesn't spread further. But I, anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Yeah, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Check out the EV Blog store where you can get my meters. Not this one, though. Uh, but you can get the 121GW, that's still for sale, and the new BM2257 is excellent, selling like hotcakes. And for every video, there's a link to the EV blog forum where you can discuss it. Um, if you don't like the youtube comments with all the still the stupid porn bots on there. Unbelievable. Catch you next time. <laughs>